Yeah, man. Yeah. Ah, oh, sick. That sounds awesome, man. So what else did he do? What? What the f would he do that? Dude, that's the dumbest mod you can ever do to your car. Nah, dude. Nah, that's I've got to go. Don't be like this guy. Who do you think I was just talking to? Comment down below. So this video is all about the worst mods you can do to your four-wheel drive. The absolute stuff you can do. Now, a lot of people don't realize this, so we're going to run through them. There's about five or six of them, so stay tuned. Whew, I think we'll leave these on. First things first, the first worst mod you can do to your four-wheel drive is just right here. This is a 20-inch rim, ladies and gents. And I'm going to tell you why this is probably one of the worst things you can do to your four-wheel drive. But before that, I want to get a 16-inch rim so you can see the comparison. And there you have it. That is a 16-inch rim, steel rim. This is an alloy rim. We're not talking steel versus alloy here. There's a whole different video for that. Link down below. But you can see the difference here. Why is this an issue? If I had this rim on my cruiser, all of a sudden, my sidewall rubber will be a lot less, right? So I have less rubber to play with, which means that I have less of a footprint when I lower my tyre pressure. So the whole reason why we lower tyre pressure when we're off-road is to gain traction, gain flotation on sand. We increase the length of our footprint. It's not about the width, it's about the length of the footprint. Another main reason here is to protect your tyres and rim and your vehicle itself. For example, when you lower your tyre pressure and you get down to about 20, sub 20, when you start driving over stumps, rocks, uneven terrain, your tyre will then deform around the objects that you're driving over, thus protecting your tyre, protecting your rim from damage and protecting your vehicle and more shock absorbing. If you have a 20 inch rim, you've got less meat to play with. Now the only time you would use a rim this size is if you, that's if you have a Ram or an F250 and you've got like 37 inch tyres on it. Then you can probably get away with this. But for me and most other four drives around the world, you do not want to go any higher than 18, in my opinion. 15, 16, 17 is where I would stick to. And then you don't have to go so big in your tires. See, I have 35 inch tires, so I have, I have loads of room to lower my tire pressure and gain a footprint. With this, I wouldn't have much. Low profile tires cannot handle the same amount of punishment that a normal off-road, proper built off-road tire can handle. Off-road tires are made for 16 inch rims, thereabouts, not for 20 inch rims. In fact, we've had a few discoveries in the past with 19 inch rims on, on tag along tours and what happens to those tires is they split at the bead. They can't handle off-road conditions. Some of the tire manufacturers say you cannot lower the tire pressure to less than 35 psi. That is not good enough for off-road. The larger the rim you put on your vehicle, the bigger the tire you need on top if you're going to go off-road with it. But if you want a show pony vehicle and you're just going to do a bit of mall crawling, yeah sure, go for 20 inch rims. Just don't go off-road. Next thing we're talking about is wheel spaces. These do not belong on a daily driver. They just shouldn't be on your daily driver because they're illegal. So if you get done with having these on, it's not a good time. I have many mates that have these on. I'm not going to mention their names, but the reason why I have these on is because the 70 series has a narrower wheel track. Other people have them on to make their wheel stands a bit wider, but they're actually not that safe as well. I know a lot of people will say, well, they're isolated incidents, the ones I'm gonna bring up now, but they do happen. So one fella took his car to get serviced by a mechanic. The mechanic apprenticed put the wheel spacer back on and the wheel. Now, most mechanics will refuse to put these on. They'll put the rims on, give you the car. When you get home, you gotta put these back on yourself. And there's a good reason for it. They're illegal. The workshop can get done for it, right? But in this case, the apprentice put them on. Didn't actually torque spec these on properly. So old mate went out on a trip on his way home. Wheel came off, damaged his wheel hub and whatnot. And it could have been a lot worse. It happened at 110 kilometers per hour. And it's happened to two people I know. The other one was a different reason, but this came off. So these belong in the racing industry. So here's a recap and a few other key points. These are more likely to fall off due to servicing and neglect. These are quite difficult to check if they're loose because you have to take your wheel off to check the nuts on these. 
These will inflict more stress in your bearings because you are shifting the load from your axle outwards. And some lessen the thread depth. This spacer here gets bolted to your hub. Then your rim gets bolted to the spacer. Some spacers don't have wheel nuts on it. It's simply just a spacer. But they won't be this thick. They'll only be like about eight mil to maybe, you know, or less. That is eight mil less of thread for your wheel nuts to grab onto. Over the top tires or very extreme aggressive tires. This is another problem that I see on a lot of four wheel drives. Now, unless you are a rock hopper or you do some crazy stuff like this guy, Musa from New South Wales, keep in mind, Musa, who happens to be the subject we're talking about here, that is not his daily driver. So what I'm trying to say here is this is not a daily driver tire, nor are the Trepidors, nor are the, the Simex centipedes. And they're all over aggressive tires they don't really belong on a daily driver on the highway because they're so noisy, they're so hard to wheel balance, they just don't belong on a daily driver. However, this could be your play set of tyres if you're going to the muddy hills for the weekend. They're your weekend warrior tyres, they're not your tourer tyres, they're not your daily driving tyres. Aggressive tyres like this, most of these actually bias ply. Bias ply don't give you the same amount of footprint lengthways as a, as a radial tyre would. Also, a bias ply doesn't really belong on the highway, a radial tyre does. And some insurance companies will not insure your vehicle if you have bias tyres on a bias ply. So that's another thing to consider. These are good for weekend warriors, these are good for competition trucks. So have a play set, but I wouldn't recommend, in my opinion, to have these permanently mounted on your daily driver. End of story. If you are going to go for something more aggressive, go for a mud terrain, don't go for an extreme terrain. I'm about to enlighten you guys as to when you can be a tight ass when it comes to accessories. Cheap accessories can ruin your car, can you know, ruin a good day, can even like be life threatening to the extreme extent. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you're a tight ass with accessories to your four wheel drive, when it comes to awnings and things like that, that's fine because you're not relying on those things to get you home. But when you're out in the middle of nowhere and you've you know, you've done like a tight ass budget on an engine tune, uh, cheap running gear on your vehicle like CV axles, like drive shafts. If you're going to get cheap gear that you need to rely on on your vehicle and you're in the middle of nowhere and something goes wrong, well, you've only got yourself to blame. You were a tight ass on your accessories that needed to be reliable. So I'm not saying you can't go out and buy a cheap rooftop tent and whatnot. Things that need to be reliable on your vehicle, like a turbo, like your cooling hoses. Don't go and buy cheap stuff, get the genuine stuff. Get the, or the stuff that's better than genuine. Because if your heater hose fails out in the middle of nowhere and you don't have a spare one, what are you gonna do? Your fan belt snaps because you got a cheap one. Get genuine parts or better. And another reason, this goes across the board on all cheap accessories. With our throwaway society these days and people out there who just throw their crap away when it breaks, that is another reason why not to get cheap accessories because all you're doing is you're adding to the problem. To the problem of the world where we just keep throwing plastics and stuff out because it's broken. If you spend good money on quality gear, it's going to last you to the point where if you get rid of your car later, you sell it on Gumtree or something because you're actually going to get some money for it. If you have a King's awning, are you going to sell that on Gumtree? I doubt it. You're probably not going to get anything for it and it'll probably be broken by the time you want to sell it. So. Not name picking here, but there are a lot of cheap awnings out there. I've had a lot of cheap awnings and where are they now? They're broken or they're off. Throwaway society is a huge problem that we're all part of, whether you like it or not. This is also a cheap accessory. It's a cheap way to fix a wheel track correction. Instead of buying a proper diff that sorts the job out properly and legally. This is the illegal way of doing it and the cheap way of doing it. This one is a very common one, and I would like you guys to play this game as well in the comments below. Anything you see or you know people have that they can't even use on their vehicle or that they don't even use. It's either they can't use it or they'd never use it. I'll start with three awnings. Awning on the left, awning on the right, awning on the rear. When do you actually use three awnings? Look, if you use it for work, that's fair enough, but why would you have three awnings? High lift jacks. People have high lift jacks mounted on the vehicle. You drive past them 
and you can see the only place I can actually lift the vehicle with a high lift jack is on the front bull bar. You're carrying you can't use. A $2,000 roof rack to hold your crappy $300 eBay light. Do you see that often? Or what about people who never actually use their roof rack, but they have a roof rack? Upgraded snorkels, an air box, but nothing else is done and nothing in future is planned. Unless you do everything, there's no point in doing it. So there are a lot of mods that people have that they can't use or don't even need. So in the comments below, please list some that you know or that you can think of. The next bad mod, or one of the worst mods you can do to your vehicle is, you know, there's a lot of people that are cashed up and are new to full driving, so they'll get the vehicle and they want the bigger lift. They want the bigger lift than what their mate has. They want this monster truck because it's gonna be the best way to set up a vehicle, right, for off-road, isn't that right? It's actually the worst thing you can do to your car. If you install a six inch lift or something crazy on your vehicle, it's gonna handle like it's gonna be dangerous to drive. It's gonna be completely illegal. It's gonna be a police magnet because it is so big. So take this vehicle, for instance. We're gonna bring Musa from Aussie Four Wheelers back into it again. This is not his daily. Even he would agree that that is over the top for a daily. He has a daily driver and it looks nowhere the same as that vehicle on your screen right now. The danger is people don't know what they're getting themselves into. So key points again, your car will handle like an absolute bucket of crabs it will not handle well at all it'll be downright dangerous and just the driving of it you'll be going around roundabouts you'll get like severe body roll it's not good it is not good for your vehicle and when you do this they generally need to be a complete custom fit out you know you need coil retainers you need special things done to your shock towers you need to extend things extend brake lines there's so many things that you need to do custom work there is a saying, for every one thing you change on your suspension, you've got to do three more things. And then that snowballs from there. And then all of a sudden, your car is completely custom. So what I would suggest is people stick to a lift that is available in the market and you know will work for your vehicle. So lifting a vehicle, suspension-wise, is very dangerous if you go out of the norm. So what I would suggest is stick to something that's as legal as possible that makes your car handle nice and it's just enough to fit the size tires that you want on your vehicle otherwise you're not going to be happy with it and you're wasting money on nothing so that is a very bad mod be careful with suspension most people in the four wheel drive industry are doing amazing things getting amazing power out of a lot of four wheel drives it's quite impressive you know, there's diesel drags, there's all that kind of stuff. But what you need to be aware of is um, if you are wanting to build a remote tourer, you do not want to do what they offer. They can probably tune your car, no, no doubt, but you need to specify you don't want that over the top ridiculous power coming out of your vehicle because you'll open a can of worms. However, if you, you know, if you just do the casual beach run, um, you do the diesel drags or you don't really go remote and you're always within arms reach of help and phone reception sure go for it but just be aware of what you're in for it gets very expensive so with my vehicle for example i had a tune well have a tune and we got the, like a lot out of it without stressing the turbo and then i got them to wind it back we wanted to see the numbers i could get out of it and then we wound it back so this is reliable when i head out in the middle of nowhere this is an entire video on its own so i'm going to keep this as key points right now from here on big turbos means you have to rev the vehicle a lot higher to get your power before the turbo kicks in and when the turbo kicks in that's when a turbo diesel gets its magic what you want on your turbo diesel when you're off-road and you're doing slow hard laboring stuff you want the torque as low as possible. So big turbos, I wouldn't recommend. More boost equals more stress. More power equals more engine mods. You got your clutch because now your clutch is slipping because the stock clutch can't hold it. You need a bigger intercooler because now your vehicle's running too hot. You need a bigger turbo to, to use the bigger snorkel you have. You know, it's be prepared to go the whole way through if you want big gains. And then finally, above all, we have decreased reliability. If you overtune your engine, you're stressing the motor, you're also stressing all your driveline components. You squeeze that accelerator at the wrong time, you're going to snap some stuff. Something's got to give. More power equals more fuel burnt. You can't tune an engine to be more efficient because even if you could, you're going to drive it harder because you can get more out of it. 
Righto folks, which one was your pick of the bunch? Out of the worst full drive mods you can do to your vehicle. And are there any that I left out? If there are, comment down below, let me know. And check out this playlist over here with more helpful information for four wheeling and what to do and what not to do. See you then.